In this lecture, I will talk about fast Fourier transform and particularly I will talk about factorize the matrix and further operation count. Okay, let's talk about factorized matrix and further operation count. In my previous lecture, we already talked about equation 7. Equation 7 at that time. But just in case you forgot, let me try to rewrite equation 7 for you. At that time, we say the equation 7 says something like this. Uh, C tilde naught, C tilde 1, C tilde 2, and C tilde 3 is equal to a 4 by 4 matrix, which is like the first row consists of W raised to the power 0 times 0, and then W raised to the power 0 times 1, W raised to the power 0 times 2, W raised to the power 0 times 3, and the second row consists of W raised to the power 1 times 0, W raised to the power 1 times 1, W raised to the power 1 times 2, W raised to the power 1 times 3 and the pattern similarly like that. Let's say the last row, row number 4, it should be W raised to the power 4 times 0, W raised to the power 4 times 1, W raised to the power 4 times 2, and W raised to the power 4 times 3. The same thing you can do for row number 3. And this matrix 4 by 4 supposed to multiply with multiply with a vector f0, f1, f2, and f3. So basically, in that equation 7 that I talked to you earlier, that equation I just rewrote in here just in case you forgot. Now, as you can see, that equation 7 over there can be expressed as equation number 9. And basically what we try to say is that the coefficient matrix 4 by 4 that you see earlier in equation 7 can be considered as the product of these two matrix. So equation 7 can be expressed equivalently as equation number 9. However, there's one thing that you have to be careful because if you look at the equation 7 that I just rewrote for you in the red color, if you look on the left hand side, you're supposed to have C tilde naught, C tilde 1, and then C tilde 2 and 3. However, in equation number 9, the order is a little bit different. Like you see, you have C tilde naught, C tilde 2 instead of C tilde 1 and then C to the 1 is down here, and then C to the 3 is there. So the order of the left-hand side computation in equation 9 is slightly different from the order of equation 7 that I wrote to you earlier. However, the answer for C to the 0, or C to the 2, or C to the 1, C to the 3, computed by equation number 9 will be exactly the same thing as the one computed by equation 7. So now, basically, so we say the coefficient matrix in equation 7 can be broken as a product of these two matrix. So now, let us try to consider the second coefficient matrix and then multiply with the vector f. And in case you forgot, the vector f that you have is like f0, f1, f2, f3. They are the known value at some d 
discretized time point from the given periodic function f. So this vector f is known at some discretized time, at some discretized time. So the next thing we want to say is we want to let we want to let uh, equation nine. We want to do in two step. Equation nine we want to do in two step. The first step we say let's consider the second coefficient matrix multiplied with the vector f, and that is shown in equation ten. Now, if you take a look carefully at equation ten, you can see we define the product of the second matrix time of vector f in equation nine. We define that as the intermediate vector f1, and that vector f1 intermediate vector f1 have four components: f1 zero, f1 one, f1 two, and f1 three, as you can see from equation ten. So, on the next slide. We'll see what happens if we take a closer look at the first equation of the first part of equation 10, and then what happens when we look at the second part of equation 10, and so on, as you will see on the next slide. So, if you see on the next slide, equation 11a tell you the long form expansion of f10. As you can see from the previous slide, you can see from the previous slide, f10 is equal to one time f0 plus zero time f1 plus w raised to the power zero time f2 plus zero time f3, and that is exactly what you have. In equation 11a, which is right here, that is the, the the expression for f10, and then similarly, when you look at the the next equation on the previous slide, we can calculate f11 is equal to f1 plus w raised to the power zero times f3, and then go on to the next equation, we can calculate f12 is equal to f0 plus w raised to the power 2 times f of 2. Now, however, for this particular case, you can see we claim that w raised to the power 2 is the same thing as negative of w raised to the power 0. And the reason we say that is because the if you evaluate the definite uh, the the quantity w raised to the power two. Now, according to our previous defi definition, we sh should remember the definition of w is something like e raised to the power minus i times two pi divided by capital N. In this case, capital N let's say is equal to 4, assuming you have 4 data points. So that is the definition of W that we have earlier. So as you can see, the, def the definition of W, the definition W is exactly this quantity right there. So as you can see, based on that definition of W, this is the def W is equal to right there. That is a definition. So when you raise W raised to the power two, you have to time two in here. And so from here you can simplify. It become e raised to the power minus i pi. And that e raised to the power minus i pi, we can easily show it is equal to minus 1. And the reason that can be shown is because you just make use of the so-called Euler identity again, using Euler identity. And that basically say this quantity is equal to cosine of pi 
minus i time psi of pi based on Euler identity. And then after that we say psi of pi is equal to zero. This term is zero. And cosine of pi is equal to minus one. Okay? But minus one is the same thing as negative of w raised to the power zero. So the point I want to say is when you calculate f1 of 2, we need to have a w raised to the power 2 in here. But we just proved to you that w raised to the power 2 is the same thing as negative of w raised to the power 0. OK. So the advantage is this. The advantage, if you look carefully in here, you will see that when you calculate f1, 0, based on equation 11a and you compare with the computation of f1 of 2. If you compare these two equations, you can see that they involve with one complex multiplication and one complex addition for equation 11a. For equation 11c, to compute f1 of 2, the multiplication w0 times f of 2 is exactly appear again in here. And therefore, the computation of equation 11c, equation 11c can be obtained almost for free based on the computation of 11a. And what I'm trying to say to you almost free is instead of taking F0 plus W0 F of 2, now in equation 11C, we have F of 0 minus W0 F of, D, uh, F of 2. So the computation of these two is almost for free, almost the same. Similarly, if you compare the computation of F11 is shown in equation 11b, and you compare that with the computation of F13 in equation 11d. Then you can see very clearly that those computations are the same. The only thing different is instead of plus the product of W0, F3, here you have minus the computation of w0 f of 3. That observation is very, very useful. So what I'm trying to tell you is if you look at equation 11a, b, c, and d, in order to calculate the value of f10, f11, f12, and f13, you will have only uh, much less multiplication and addition. Okay. So basically it say the computation of equation 11a through equation 11d only require two complex multiplication and four complex addition. The reason we need to have two multiplication and four addition is 